Hello gardening friends, welcome to Backyard Basics. Pretty soon, in the winter time, we'll be taking our plants in, and in the springtime, we'll bring them out for a refreshing period outside, and then they may come in again. They're great decorators and air purifiers, but they need a little maintenance. It's not just taking them out and bringing them in and feeding them now and then, uh, because um, sometimes they can run into insect problems. Uh, this is a Neanthabella palm, one of the shortest palms in the world, but it doesn't make any difference the size of the palm. They're all susceptible to red spider. And the red spider is normally found under the foliage, and, um, and you'll see webbing. If it's really bad, there'll be this fine webbing in there. And so uh, that'll be your signal, or the leaves will get kind of chlorotic, and then uh, that's another signal. What do we do? Well, well, with some frequency, we can take the plant and mist it and kind of reduce the problem early on. You know, red spider do not like water. So this is a good way on a weekly basis to get in there and uh, wash them off. If it's got a real bad one, take them outside, use the hose, really get it nice and clean. Um, there are uh, products that you can use to help prevent it. Seaweed is one of those. Seaweed is well known uh, for its uh, mineral content and its um, growth support, but um, a lot of folks didn't know that seaweed also helps reduce the problem of red spider. So we get in there, add the seaweed, get underneath these guys, and uh, do some good spraying. It's really important. Red spider can also be on the curtain nearby. And so you don't want it to um, bring it back in there, put it next to that very same curtain without cleaning it up. So um, I would like you to go ahead and vacuum that curtain and then bring the darn thing back inside and uh, there won't be any problems. Here's another one right here, the ficus and citrus and many other plants get something called scale. There's several types of scale, but um, the plant will be weepy. Under stress, you'll see the shiny stuff on top of the leaves and um, you know you've got scale. There'll be a lot of leaf drop also. Well, scale is a little bit tough, but um, maybe I would treat it outside because we're going to use a couple of sprays. Neem oil is one of them, and that's a tree extract. And it's kind of a little bit oily, but it does an excellent job on scale and on some other insects and even on uh, fungus here and there. But um, in this case, we're going to use it on the scale that might be on your ficus or, like I said, some other plants. Those little things under the fern leaves, though, are not scale. Those are the... Um, spore capsules for uh, propagation, so it's not that on those guys. But um, on a ficus, it sure could be scale, and uh, taking a sample to your local nursery would also be very good to identify it properly. Well, here's a Hoya. The Hoyas are famous for the mealybug problem, and so you take a little bit of alcohol and uh, get a Q-tip with some alcohol on it, and then you go in there and you daub it on the different mealybugs and you've got excellent control. Look at it periodically and uh, you'll find that you'll be able to keep the uh, Hoyas looking really good too. So those are some ideas, whether you're bringing them in for the winter or you're bringing them in after a nice little visit outside in the springtime, you need to look at the specific insects that can go after these plants, control them, and you'll have hail and hardy plants in the house. For Backyard Basics, I'm John Dromgoole. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.